Hello, Marina, and welcome, uh, welcome here in Belgrade. And it's a pleasure to have you at the Data Science Conference Europe. Thanks, sir. It was to, nice to meet you. Uh, event. So uh, you're an associate professor and dean of the Faculty of Informatics and Digital Technology, and as, as well as a head of the laboratory that deals with computer vision, virtual, augmented reality, and AI. Uh, so could you elaborate a bit more on your development path? What are some of the moments you're most proud of? And could you also talk a bit about which European uh, AI projects are you working on at the moment? And what distinguishes your team to get these grants from the EU to help with these projects? Okay, thank you for your question. So for, for now, for uh, I think 20 years, I'm working at the university as a, well, first as an assistant and then as a professor. So I started uh, first as, a, I finished maths and informatics and then uh, I changed to computer, uh, computer science, and then I uh, decided that the topic that most interest for, is for me, it's uh, computer vision. So long, long time I'm working in that field. And uh, in that period, we had uh, really many p projects, but uh, probably the, the, the one that we are well, most proud of is the one that uh, I was leading. It was a national project, uh, and it's about the sports. The idea was that uh, we detect the players, uh, that track them, analyze what they are doing, and in some, how, in some cases um, to help them to improve their performances. So it was very, very demanding and difficult task, and everybody said to me, no, no, it's too difficult, don't do it. But uh, we decided to do it to, well, to somehow um, find what are our limits or what can we do, so we started with that. And uh, after, well, a few years, we got some very... Uh, promising results, and probably that was the well the step when uh, most doors have opened, and uh, we start to be part of uh, well many uh, course projects first. Now we are working at a Horizon project, and uh, because of that really really interesting task, now I have five or six PhD student leading, and uh, so we are now well big potential. So probably that's the cause. Uh, while we are in so many projects and while we are uh, uh, doing so well, probably well. Yeah. It's you, always you can be better, but uh, well, we are trying to be good. <laughs> well, it sounds like a great path and great potential moving forward. Uh, so what are your main interests in computer vision? Uh, well, I, I changed during the years because of the uh, 10 years ago, the, there is a huge uh, boom about uh, deep learning. And at that stage, uh, we got uh, so good results. So because of that, uh, we decided to, well, to somehow deal with more complex tasks. And uh, so now, uh, dominantly, we are doing with uh, object detection, mostly in sports and in uh, surveillance. Uh, we are helping uh, rescue teams to find uh, people in the woods or what are missing or uh, they don't know where, where the people are, so we are helping them. And also, the, we are helping um, well, military police to, to analyze the borders and uh, migration. So they are so, well, very interesting task. But also, we are doing with, uh, with sports, where the idea is to, well, to detect, to track, and to analyze uh, persons in, in the images or videos. Uh, going back to your special, which is sports scenes, the title of your talk at the conference is Analysis of Sports Scenes Using Computer Vision. So could you tell us what is the most challenging task at, in the detection of sports events and scenes? Uh, to be challenging, uh, we decided to, um, to analyze sports, but team sports and sports with ball. So at the scene, we have uh, many players, uh, moving all the time in different directions, uh, many times very occluded, so it's very difficult to, to track them and uh, to see them. And uh, so all the algorithms, they are already uh, trained for some, I'm, I can say, normal tasks, such as uh, tracking cars on the street or tracking people. Uh, we, we couldn't um, use them, so we have to retrain them and uh, rebuild the algorithm and do some hacks to, well, to perform better than uh, it's, uh, it, it was just using those algorithms. So uh, also, we have a problem with, uh, because everybody uh, said to me, 
in uh, handball because we are using handball and we are analyzing handball. Everybody said me, the most important thing in handball is ball. But the problem with the ball is that the ball is very, 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 very small. And uh, the most of the time it is in the hand of the player. So you, you, you can see the ball. You can see just a part of the fly of the ball and uh, you don't know where the player withdrew the ball. So it's very, very difficult. And that's the problem we, we haven't solved that. We, we have so bad results detecting the balls and uh, we have to do more harder on that problem. And uh, the, the one, another one task is uh, we decided to work with uh, in swimming pool with swimmers. And then the problem is, uh, well, the water, because uh, uh, on the on the camera and on, on the video you have the problems of uh, reflection, which is uh, usually not the problem when you are uh, shooting something in the uh, in the field or outside or indoors. So yes, I don't know. Probably we are always uh, selecting some challenging tasks and then that moves us to to improve our work. Uh, speaking of uh, challenges, uh, what are the challenges in automat automatization of these sports systems and what is your opinion on the timestamp for full automatization? Uh, well, uh, it depends. Uh, as we said, as I said, um, uh, we, we selected a team sport, but uh, when you, if you select just uh, one person or individual sport, then uh, now the results are getting better. So because you can use not only cameras, but also many sensors, which are, well, cheap now, so you can track the, the player, you can uh, uh, monitor all the performance, and that's already present in uh, swimming, for example, for Ma Michael Phelps, and also for, uh, I don't know, NBA and, uh, well, um, highly ranked teams. But uh, what we want to, uh, it's to use the equipment that everybody can use it and uh, can be helpful for, for everybody, even for young people, for teams which are not well, very ranked and uh, with so many uh, foundations and everything. So uh, it's a tricky question, depends on the sport. Probably if you have so much money and uh, equipment and the teams, so it can be in some case, well, it can be automated. But also uh, those teams mostly have a big crew that uh, is uh, manually analyzing all the scenes and everything. And we have to, we want to skip that. We just want to be automatic. So yes, that will be, uh, we need m few more, or I don't know how many years, but uh, to automate all the, well, that uh, tasks. But, uh, well, we'll see. I'm uh, optimistic. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for those insights. And to cap off the interview, uh, what will be one main reason for you to return next year for the Data Science Conference? Ah, it's a, it's a very nice atmosphere and also the the talks are very inspiring and uh, well, and there are many people and different events and uh, well, uh, uh, this year, because this is my third year that I'm coming and uh, now I bring four of my colleagues. So every time we are coming in more and more numbers <laughs> uh, and well, that's the reason. I think the, the atmosphere and uh, you, when you are here, you uh, meet other people with the same interest and same idea. You change that uh, and uh, also the talks are, well, very interesting. Uh, thank you and we do hope to continue seeing you here at the conference. So thank okay. you once again for the interview. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marina Ivasichkos and I came from University of IECA Faculty of Informatics and Digital Technologies. I'm now at the Data Science Conference in Belgrade and uh, let's change the world through data.